It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Actually, no, it was the best of times all the time. Here are some of the highlights of the improvements and changes in 3BSD 13, starting with the 64-bit ARM architecture, known as ARM64, is promoted to Tier 1 status for FreeBSD 13. FreeBSD 13 also saw the removal of obsolete bin utils 2.17 and GCC 4.21 from the tree. All supported architectures now use the LLVM Clang toolchain. Also obsolete, Clang and associated tools have been updated to 11.0.1. The BSD version of GREP is now installed by default. The obsolete GNU version that was the previous default has been removed the qat or cat driver has been added supporting some of the cryptographic acceleration functions of the intel quick assist device the freebsd kernel now supports in kernel framing and encryption of transport layer security data on tcp sockets for tls versions 1.0 through 1.3 and several deprecated drivers have been removed from networking Right, here comes the fun part. Having backed up everything that was important, uh, I'm now going to upgrade my main workstation. This is the machine I do all my videos on and everything else, so uh, I'm hoping things will go nice and steady. This is a UFS running machine, so I haven't got the luxury of uh, boot environment backup, which I've been learning is a fantastic uh, thing, so let's hope it goes all to plan. I'm just making sure that the system is upgraded and updated to the latest packages, and everything seems to be all right. But now I'm just going to issue the magical FreeBSD update hyphen R for release 13 and upgrade and away we go. This does take a long time, uh, so many of these things I'm going to fast forward. Does this look reasonable? Yes. And here we go. Now it's well into uh, upgrading it's it's fetching all the uh, patches that will be applied to the system and it's applied them and now it's fetching the files to finish uh, the upgrading i have to say that i've upgraded this machine uh, from earlier versions and it's still the same one i haven't reinstalled for a good few years now and every time it's gone sweet so this one should be no different just updating the uh, packages after the initial upgrade to bring everything into line you have to do this to make sure all the libraries are all in sync, etc, etc. So now I'm upgrading the user land utilities, or everything extra that was installed after the initial FreeBSD base install. Going towards the end and oh, checking the integrity that might take a while right okay and finally once that all been done with the final command that we issue is freebsd update install just to finish off this is a much um, quicker process all done now we can reboot into our lovely upgraded freebsd 13 system Next, I'm installing a new workstation using ZFS. Now, this is going to be on my HP Z400. It's got 12 gigabytes of RAM, running on a nice uh, 480 SSD. I've got the usual setup and uh, speed through this. Now, I'm going to choose uh, Auto ZFS. I don't normally choose ZFS on the desktop, but I'm going to start doing it from now on. So, Auto ZFS. And it's only got one disk in it at the moment, um, so I'm going to use uh, Stripe, I think. So I'll go down and tell it which uh, disk here. Yeah. Stripe, AD0. I'm going to leave everything. Def 
default, I think. I'm not going to change. I don't need to encrypt anything. If I was on a laptop, I would do. And we'll just start that. And we'll get going. I'll just fast forward this. We've seen the process of uh, installing FreeBSD before. It's nothing new. Password. We type the password again. It didn't pick up a uh, Wi-Fi dongle that I had plugged in, but that's not a problem. Just configure it. Da -da -dum. There you go. Now we can add users. I'm just going to skip the user part. And that's it. We will exit. And again, it will not change. It's going to reboot and into the new installed FreeBSD 13. Now this workstation will be taking over as the main one. and um, But after I've tested it for a while, just to see if it's as stable as my main one. Because they, again, it'll be where I'll be doing all my videos. I need to make sure it's uh, it's not going to crash or do anything unusual. And there you are. There's your name on this one. It's detected the uh, networking, so it's not a problem. And we're just going to update it. Because it's the, first, it's the first time I've run uh, PKG, so it's bootstrapping it. There we go. Hmm, quite a few packages. I used desktop installer to get a KDE desktop up and running as quickly as I could so that I could test FreeBSD 13 out on this HP Z400. I'll skip the process to save time. Right, I'm going to pan over from the existing machine. Uh, if you see some wallpaper in the background, it's, uh, it's going to get painted and decorated soon, so don't worry. There's an old Commodore... Uh, 1084S monitor on a shelf full of other stuff that's waiting to be repaired. My Z400 and my new install. Once I've tested this out, got everything uh, transferred over. I'll be uh, I'll be using this as my main machine. So there's a newly installed KDE. Everything seems to be nice and smooth. Uh, I'm going to try KDE Connect. It's an invaluable tool, is KDE Connect. And it's picked up my Hawaii phone. And yeah, it seems to be in order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a file to it, which is kind of freaky because you've already seen the video of the file. But the file I'm going to send is the video that you've already seen. It gets complicated. So I'm just sending it. There we go. If we open it up and run it, yeah, it's the one that you've just seen before. So that's kind of weird, that. So I've just loaded it for the first time to use in the video that we've already seen. Anywho, next we're going to have a look at... Uh, do you know I made that text bigger? When I made the window bigger, it got smaller. Next I'm going to run the Linus test. Um, I know what the score will be. It'll be roughly about 50 odd, 56. And it is 56. So FreeBSD can be locked down as much or as less as you want. For a desktop machine, it's not as important as a server. Um, I haven't put a firewall on, which I'll be doing later. And there's one or two other things I can tighten up just to increase the score. There's NeoFetch. Always a nice thing to have. And there's FreeBSD 13. Very nice. Um, like I say, I'll be testing this. I will no doubt probably put Motif Window Manager as my default um, window manager and desktop. Simply because, I, to me, I, I just prefer it. I do like KDE and I do tend to swap between KDE and Motif Window Manager. So we'll see. Right, I suppose, uh, thoughts. Well, what can I say? The install process took a long, well, a little time uh, to finish. But it went smoothly, as it always does for me. Um, I can't fault it. FreeBSD has a very, very good track record uh, of upgrading a working system. It's always wise to make backups, of course, and uh, that's what I did. But apart from that, no issues. Uh, FreeBSD 13 does change quite a few things. There's quite a few things in the background going on. Uh, more details than I give out in the summary can be found on the FreeBSD 13 release notes page. But yes, it's um, it's very smooth. My machine is not it's not the fastest machine in the world, and it, it did take a while. That was mainly down to my um, my internet, I think. 
and the installation on the new machine of FreeBSD 13, um, well, it, it went as smooth as it always does. I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's kind of odd. Uh, when you get a system that is as polished as FreeBSD, um, with developers who know what they're doing as they do, with wonderful backers of the FreeBSD Foundation, who have sponsored a lot of um, fantastic work in FreeBSD, and the end result for the user is a seamless, painless upgrade and install. And uh, for a reviewer, it makes life harder because there's nothing I can gripe about. There's nothing I can complain about. So this particular release, uh, it'll get 100% thumbs up. As you know, and uh, yeah, excellent. I do hear criticism of some people saying, "Oh well, you know, FreeBSD shouldn't be on the desktop. It should be on the server." Or oh, FreeBSD doesn't make a good desktop. Absolute nonsense. We have all the same software as what you get in Linux. There's one or two proprietary ones which we don't have. Um, and one or two of the complaints I hear is, oh, well, you've got old software on FreeBSD, which is utter nonsense as well. You can have as good a desktop experience on FreeBSD as you can on any Linux system, if not better, simply because of the technologies built into it, like ZFS. ZFS on root. We boot environment support. Absolutely outstanding. Anyway, before I get too far down into the uh, lecturing and uh, ranting path, I'll say uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Well done if you've made it to the end of the video, and if you've found it useful in any way, then please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to make sure you don't miss future videos, then please click the subscribe button and the notification bell. This helps the channel grow so that I can keep on making content that helps the FreeBSD community grow as well. Yeah.